It's a great pleasure to welcome you all to the Mansion House and a great honour to be standing here for the first Bankers and Merchants Dinner after the emotional roller coaster of the general election. <laughs> Chancellor, your new majority allows you to speak with the clarity which the city loves. I hope you will continue to use it to argue for our place in a reformed Europe. The city depends on access to a vibrant single market. Congratulations also to you, Governor, for your very refreshing and energetic engagement with markets and the industry you oversee. And also for your meticulous and dynamic plan regarding training for the London Marathon. <laughs> now that's behind you, I hope you're looking forward to pudding for your very own programme of quantitative easing. <laughs> Once again, both of you, welcome to the Egyptian Hall. I want to begin across the Mediterranean in the Greek colony of Syracuse. Two and a half thousand years ago, its ruler, Dionysus, had his own financial crisis. His city was flat broke. He tried a novel approach. He impounded all the one drachma coins and stamped them as two drachmas. Hey presto, wealth creation. Thankfully, our city methods of wealth creation are slightly more sophisticated. And it's here that modern day financial services have been refined. But the unprecedented recent scandals have undermined the heritage of the city and our nation. The idea of financial services as a good social offer has been shattered. The behavior of the few, alongside those dreadful emails and chat room comments from the past weeks, have not helped the recovery of our reputation. I grew up in the partnership culture of the 1970s. The buck stopped with my partners and me for our mistakes. The I condemn those who put themselves before their clients, using their firms and their shareholders to feather their own nests without themselves taking the risk. But those people are now being rooted out. The system that allowed them to hang on is being overhauled. The Fair and Effective Markets Review marks a new stage in that journey. Governor, thank you. Your leadership has been essential, and we look forward to hearing your views. But before then, let me say this. Let's not kid ourselves. We still need to earn back the trust we lost and demonstrate that we are worthy of that trust. The foundation will always be the quality of our services and our markets that we're known for overseas and at home, delivered day in, day out. All our clients, regardless of profit or loss. Regulators can only do so much. Regulators, by definition, will be behind the curve of innovation. That is not a criticism. That is reality. Everybody wants clean, efficient markets, but that takes positive engagement of management. But I feel the pendulum has swung too far towards prescription. Just because it's legal doesn't mean it's right. It's the spirit of what we believe is right, which should be the principle of our regulation. It's like a supermarket with no security camera. If someone takes something without paying for it, it's theft. Theft is theft and there is no escape. People should uphold professional standards, irrespective of whether the regulators are there or not. It's up to management to set the tone and enforce that discipline. When I go overseas, 
I make sure people realise that we admit our mistakes. They are more interested in what we've done about those mistakes, how we've corrected them. They want to learn from our experience. That's how we build a better brand, a better economy, a better society. But there are other things we can do to restore the city's domestic reputation. Governor, you said last year, prosperity requires not just investment in economic capital, but investment in social capital as well. I couldn't agree more. It reminds me of Robert Kennedy's assessment of GDP, that it measures neither our wit nor our courage, neither our wisdom or our learning, neither our compassion or our devotion to our country. It measures everything in short except that which makes life worthwhile. We have the same problem. We must communicate the city's contribution above and beyond numbers. Go to any train station at 7 a.m. and look at the people coming to work here. They aren't in bowler hats or morning coats. They're just hard-working, normal people. Paid-up citizens who do their best for their family, for their employer, and for their community. Giving time, for instance. Employers, quite rightly, are increasingly keen to promote volunteering. Why? Because the best young employees want to work for socially responsible companies. And at a time of increasing employment, keeping the best people is just as important as attracting them. Now, some time ago, I was on the tube. The Lord Mayor is a man of the people. And I was travelling from Earl's Court to Southfields, and I bumped into a group of fantastically well-behaved well school children. I got on the train, and one of them offered me a seat, which I naturally declined. It made me feel very, very old. <laughs> but we got talking, and I discovered that the teacher was hanging off the same pole as I was. And they were all there, coming back from the Globe Theatre. The whole class had been up to see Midsummer Night's Dream. So I said, how do you do that? Deutsche Bank paid for it. Everyone in here has stories like that. But our dilemma is that we are just too British. We don't talk about it. We have to pull out that cultural stopper, be more open. Now, you may have seen City Giving Day splashed across yesterday's City AM. If you missed it, I promise you, there's a copy for you downstairs at the newsstand. And you can pick up a copy on the way out. But it's an opportunity to lift the curtain around community responsibility. A showcase for people who've supported and been supported by the city. Time given. People supported. Students given a way into training. Homeless people who found a route off the streets. Mentoring for schools and startups from Dorset to Dundee. What's more, firms themselves can say to their employees, Look, it's the great tradition of the city. You're part of it too. Ask yourselves do you know what your firm does in the community? You should. Do your staff know? They should. It's so important because it helps define the company's very essence. Be proud of your employer. Be proud of your city. City Giving Day is our chance to take the show on the road, standing alongside the students, the respite homes, the hospices, the youth clubs, the uniform services. For the good of our society, that's what we are proud to serve. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honour to serve you this year as your Lord Mayor.